we about to go into this weekend. It's an overcast day here in Atlanta, and I just taped a very emotional interview with Eddie Williams Sellers about his book. I affectionately call him in my head the Duke of Cabbage Town because in my alter life, my other life, one of those lives, <laughs> got nine of a cat. Um, I'm also the Duchess of Grand Pollock. So, but the interview is about his book, My Duke of Cabbage Town. So, stay tuned and follow for more on that. I'm still working on setting up a Patreon, so I will keep you all updated on how you can support this show, <laughs> because artists are starving right now, and there's so very little creative work, and I would like to expand these productions, but... Funds. Anyways, so, also... So hopefully you saw the big announcement from the Duchess earlier, and if you missed it, you should have texted Duchess to 33777 so you could have known what was happening. I'm going to let you go over there and find out what happened. But, yes. So excited. So very excited. Watch the rest of this and then go over there. And, I know I just heard your eardrums, so soothe them, bum. So I'm going to figure out how to do a podcast and all this. Go ahead and save the date of September 19th, 2020, as I bring you a staged reading of my new screenplay, The Waltz. Hint, Beauty and the Beast was my favorite movie as a child, but you'll just have to tune in to see what the movie is all about. Again, this is just a staged reading with some active friends of mine who have graciously agreed to participate in this with me. I love you all so much, and I can't wait to hopefully have them on the show, right? And highlight what you all are doing. So, on my list, my ultimate before I die list was to make a short check. I'll keep you all updated on the screening and when that's possible. And also on that list was to make a feature. Is to make a feature, because we're still adding things and checking them off. This story, The Waltz, is incredibly personal to me. Now, I thought The Duchess was personal, but that was just because I was just bringing out into the world my super ego or something like that. I don't know. One of them. But anyways... With the waltz, I found myself crying in the process of writing this, and yeah. So, September 19th, stage reading of my new screenplay, The Waltz. More details to come, but you can go ahead and check out the Facebook page that I've started making for it, and go ahead and click interested or attending on that event. Um, and now, the reason you all are really tuning in, the second part of my interview with Ngazi. I believe we left off on her foray into bodybuilding. So... With that said, here we go. Yes. Okay, tell me more about that. So... Even though we were just talking about the pandemic, this <laughs> conversation is so thrilling. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, I started working out um, almost three years ago. So, November 6th would be my, my three-year anniversary of working out. And through that, like, I was really just focused on losing weight because I... My master's program had been really taxing. So, like, I lived in Macon for my master's program and drove to Atlanta. So, two or three times a week, I was doing that back and forth. And then the stress of the program in and of itself added on, like me and my sister both gained a ton of weight in that yeah. two year period. And I mean, I remember like walking into the bathroom, so, like our bathroom at home has like a double mirror. It's it horrible. It's cruel and rude. It is, it's so it? rude. Like we literally have an entire wall of a mirror. It's disrespectful. I would want that. <laughs> and I just looked in the mirror and I was like, I don't like the way this body looks. Yeah. And I knew, but at the same time, like, I mean, I've been an athlete for a long time. Like, I played basketball and tennis growing up. Like, I know, I've been in a weight room since I was 13. So, like, I know how to work out. I just didn't know how to put it together to make things work. Yeah. So, like, I got a trainer. Just, what do you mean by putting it together to make it work? Like, like putting together the nutrition, the work, like, even a workout plan of, like, how do I put together a program that's going to get me to my goals? Okay, gotcha. So, I got a trainer to help with that. So she gave me a meal plan and a workout plan. So we were just kind of working together on the weight loss part. So building muscle, dropping fat. Mm -hmm. And about like a year and a half into it, she made a comment on one of my progress photos. And she was like, we can make a figure competitor, competitor out of you. And I was like, yeah, cat, hang nice pipe dream up. <laughs> You're like, stop right there. I'm like, mm. Right, I was like, that's cute. <laughs> because it's like the world's smallest bikini on a stage of people. I don't never want a bikini in my life, let alone wow, to be okay. judged. Like, my whole body judged by people. Right. So I'm like, yeah, we're not doing this. But then I kind of, you know, continue working out, continue building muscle. And then just had the idea, I'm turning 30. It'll be my two-year anniversary of starting this. This would be a really fun way to, like, uh -huh. celebrate that. So I told her, I said, you know what? Run it. Let's do this. Right. So I started training May of last year. Mm -hmm. 
I trained for 34 weeks. So training for a fitness competition versus just regular working out is not the same. Okay. So a lot of my food stayed the same. Like all of my food stayed the same, honestly. But we would just slowly start to decrease carbs. <laughs> like Ooh. I went from 40 grams of carbs in the morning to 20, or Ooh. like oatmeal to like 20 grams of oatmeal. Mm. So like no oatmeal. Mm. Like it was very gradual. Mm. Okay. Yes. Those are things. And I love carbs. So every time she'd take a carb, I'd be like, all right, so we're doing this. Cool. You're making choices. That's fine. You know, I didn't miss it. It's okay. <laughs> but it was really fun. I yeah. really enjoy the entire aspect of bodybuilding, of like pushing yourself to a goal. And then like the planning and preparation it takes. Like I love doing my meal prep in, um, every week. Because yeah. I, one, I love not having to think about what I'm eating make it so easy and simple very and then just the weighing all of that really works for the, the way my brain processes things so i feel competent and good and like relaxed when i have everything planned out because yeah. like i love a plan right like there are some people who are like let me fly by the seat of my pants it's like you know what's even better a plan a like plan. i know what i'm gonna eat this day and i was gonna have i like knowing so less, the stress goes down so much when you have a plan Especially if you have a busy life, because it helps yes. you stick to a routine. Exactly. So having that routine also, because at that point I was so used to like getting off of work and going to the gym. Like this is what I've been doing for years. Mm -hmm. And then even adding, because like one thing that had changed with the pandemic was, well, I have a bit more free time now because I don't have to, because I work in Milledgeville, so that's an hour from where I live. Ooh. So I had to factor in my drive time to and from work. Now I don't have that, so Two I have a free hours. Exactly. So I'm sleeping in because <laughs> I mean, during my training for my show, because like I said, it was five months. It was in the beginning, it was a challenge just adding the extra workouts and the extra time in the gym. Like I had gone from hour long workouts to two hour long workouts. That seems like so long. Yes. It's weird because time in the gym is so different because I would not realize it was two hours. But my sister who works out with me would be like, so I'm going to go home. I'm like, did we have like half the workout left? <laughs> and she's like, I'm tired. Right. <laughs> but like it's. Time just works differently there. Okay, okay. So I didn't think twice that I have a two hour long workout. I'm just like, we gotta do the workout till we're done. Right. So when that was gone, I really felt a little lost after because I was like, so don't have to get up at 5.30 in the morning for cardio anymore. Workouts are not two hours long. Who lives like this? <laughs> Crazy people who aren't doing these exactly. things. It's like normal people. Okay. Um, but no, it's been really fun and I love seeing my body change also, yeah. which is really cool too with bodybuilding. I think people don't realize is you can control how big or small your body gets Yeah, to a degree. And it's cool to see like, if I want to add muscle, I do this. If I want to lose, like my trainer right now, like she's working to drop muscle mass cause uh -huh. she wants to compete in a different division. So it's very interesting watching her training differ because both of us love work doing leg day workouts. So she's trying to grow her leg muscles, but reduce her shoulder muscles, but I'm opposite. So I'm just trying to maintain my muscle mass, lower body, but grow my shoulders. And it's like, we can do so many different workouts and get different results, but we're doing the same thing. So that makes me curious, how long do you have to stick with something to see results? <laughs> because I go in and I'm all like, oh, look, I just did a workout. Mm. <laughs> I look amazing. One day, I'm good. I'm eating Doritos now. Facts. It does not work that way, apparently, though. No. <laughs> and granted, I mean, I'm guilty of it, too, because I'm always like, oh, my gosh, I hit my goal. I'm going to eat. <laughs> um, but it does take a while. I think what happens is your body actually changes a lot faster than your mind recognizes. Hmm. So I had been working out since November. It wasn't until June of the following year that I looked in the mirror and actually physically saw change. Wow. But my body had been changing. I lost 25 pounds by then already. Everyone else around me was like, oh my gosh, you're losing so much weight. But for me, because you see your body every day. Yeah. So your brain will trick you and you'll see, you won't see the same thing that everybody else who doesn't see your body every day can see. Yeah. So I look in the mirror and be like, mm -mm, I still look fat. Or I still, I still felt like when I look at it, my same 222 pound body. Mm -hmm. But it, even on this scale, I wasn't 222 pounds, but that's what I could see. Yeah. And so a lot of times we don't, we think we're not seeing results but our bodies are changing every week. Like honestly, every week your body will change. Whether that's like dropping like fat or adding muscle mass, you may not see it necessarily all the time. So like I tell people, don't obsess with pictures, don't obsess with the scale. Those are all just data points. Right. So stick, I always tell people stick to your plan for a month. So whether that's like your, a meal plan you've chosen or a workout you've chosen, 
do that same workout, do that same meal plan for four weeks okay. and record like whatever biofeedback you're getting. How do you feel when you're doing this, when you're eating this food? How do you feel during these workouts? Measurements are great. And if after four weeks, you feel like nothing has changed, then you can make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. But like even with my trainer, that's what we did. She was like, okay, because I was really nervous to start with her. I was, I felt like I couldn't do it. That was my biggest thing. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to fail. Yeah. So she was like, give me four weeks, commit to doing everything I ask you to do for four weeks, and then we'll see how you feel. And I made that mental, like that same mental change. Like I was like, okay, whatever she asked me to do food wise, whatever she asked me to do workout wise, I'm just going to do it. And then we'll see where we're at. I didn't think anything would happen. I lost like 10 pounds, which a lot of it was water weight. But still. But that's a boost, it's right? It's encouraging. Exactly. And I did lose, I feel like I lost like at least an inch, maybe just like half an inch. But my pictures when I first started, like day one to after that first month, totally different. Like I'd already started toning up, which I mean, my body naturally builds muscle very easily. Thank God. <laughs> but I physically felt different. And to me in my pictures, I looked different. Like I could see something was happening that was like, okay, I'll give you another month. And I literally kept telling her, you got one more month with me. And here we are almost three years later. I love it. I love it. Talk about tenacity. Well, we're going to cut to a little break right there because number one, it's starting to get hot in here. And number two, <laughs> we just need to take a little break. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, I guess stay tuned for more pieces of this interview. One of the benefits of sitting at the Patreon is that you will be able to watch this interview and more in full once I get it set up, once I get through play that in a delivery project and once I get through the stage reading so sometime next year hopefully <laughs> and once yeah y'all get the point as always keep bearing the lightness of being I love you all and until next time again <laughs> the theme song is playing there's no music right now in this space it's just playing in my head and I'm bouncing around because it's so happy have a good weekend y'all it's I'm gonna go drink some wine I think I've kind of settled into releasing music for the camera We'll see. Tell me in the comments if I'll be in the next week. Love you all.